Welcome to today's uh, community conversation. My name is Sean Hurley. I'll be your community host. We're joined by George and Richard for a Fusion 360 Ask Me Anything, Fusion 360 Electronics Design. All right. Um, community conversations are virtual meetups featuring expert speakers from across community. Sessions range from deep dives, tips and tricks, and live demonstrations on products such as AutoCAD, Revit, Dynamo, and Fusion 360 to round table on industry insights, emerging trends. All experience levels are welcome. Um, next, please. The, this is a real simple one. This is just, this statement is that if we make any forward looking statements, we talk about things of the future, that you make any purchasing decisions based on the way the product is shipping today. So if Richard says that it will have an AI that will read your mind and draw design from that, that mental image, it's not a promise. <laughs> it's <laughs> probably, you know, pro Richard will probably do it, but it's not, it's not, uh, don't take that as your, your purchasing motivation. So it would be a vision. <laughs> yes. Yes. Next, please. Yeah, uh, just a moment. <laughs> That'd be mental generative. Um, just some, some, uh, a couple little things here. Your line's been muted um, to reduce background noise. We invite you to turn on your camera if you feel comfortable with that to give kind of a physical environment. Um, this is a conversation and, and should be exactly that. So if you have questions, feel free to raise your hand using the Zoom function in the bottom right, and we'll call on you to unmute or unmute. Um, or you can just chat your question in the, in the chat and we will answer those as we can. Um, the session is being recorded and will be posted on the, uh, the event page where you registered. Um, all right, next. The this next one. slide would be the introduction of- Okay, uh, of all right, well, let's do, let me do an introduction. I am Sean Hurley, um, regular host. Chris Benner is, is out with a family emergency. I've got a broken uh, tooth right now, so I'm. If we 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 pulled it together, we did it. So uh, I'm located in Sunny Bend. I'm on the Autodesk uh, community team as the engagement manager. Richard, true. Yes, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yes, I'm Richard. Um, I'm with Autodesk for six years. Meanwhile, and uh, came with the acquisition of Eagle to Autodesk and. Uh, before this time, I had I worked with Eagle at CADsoft for more than 20 years. And uh, yes, Eagle is my companion. And as you all know, that's the basis for our fusion electronics we have now. And that's what we want to talk today about. Uh, my job here at Autodesk is yeah, talking about fusion electronics to all kinds of people, to my colleagues, to you, to the customers, uh, spread the word. Uh, try to make people understand what electronics is, how fusion electronics works, how you can use it. And yeah, that's mainly what I'm doing here at Autodesk. And or here you actually, yeah, you're also a longtime colleague of mine. And yeah, so I hand over to you now. Yeah, I've been working with Richard for the last, I think, 10, 11 years. Um, and I also came in with the CAD soft acquisition. So same as Richard, you know, been using Eagle for many years and now Fusion 360 Electronics. And our role is to help our customers, which include you guys, as well as other people within Autodesk who want to understand how they can better share Fusion 360 Electronics with other customers to make their, their job easier. So that's, that's what we're looking to, to talk about today, Fusion 360 Electronics. Any questions about Eagle are also welcome. So feel free to ask anything you guys want to ask. If you want to talk about the latest release, if you want to talk about, um, you know, now that we saw the safe harbor statement, if you want to try to grill us on, on what may be coming, feel free. We'll reveal what we can. What we can't, we'll, we'll let you know also. So if, there's any, if anyone has a question, feel free. You can just open up your mics. We don't have that big a group today. So if you want to... If you just want to open up and ask something, feel free. If you want to say hi, if you want to turn your camera, all of that is welcome. Right. Okay. So the chat window, I have opened it. We all know where it is, so feel free to, to join the conversation. Um, yeah, Jorge, you talked about, uh, yes, 
ask me anything. <laughs> so um, if there are no questions in the beginning, um, yeah, we could show maybe some tips or tricks if you mm -hmm. yep, are interested in. So that's, that's something we could look so. maybe into the schematic or in the border. So there, but what, what are your, your preferred tricks in, in, in infusion? What do you think is really worth mentioning? Do you have an idea? What, what, what do you have on something in your mind you would like to mention that's very important? I got some stuff I can show. Let me let me yeah. actually go ahead and show you guys something first. So, <clears throat> and again, like I said, at any point, feel free to, to raise your hand. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this first. So if you're new to Fusion 360 Electronics, this is a new series of tutorials that was released last week. Okay. Fusion 360 Electronics for beginners. It takes you from nothing to a finished board. In total, it's about two hours worth of content. But once you're done with it, you'll feel very comfortable with how Fusion 360 Electronics works, and you'll be able to get your designs uh, Actually, comfortably. Yeah. So, sorry, I interrupt you, but I've seen this yesterday, and I looked into it. So it's on the on the Fusion 360 uh, YouTube channel. Correct. And it's it's you have your own playlist for this, I've seen. So it's a mm -hmm. special playlist, Fusion 360 Electronics for Beginners. That's really nice because uh, that's a place where you yeah, you really can find it because uh, I always have the feeling if I go into the Fusion 360 YouTube channel and search for electronics videos, we have the electronics playlist, but there is so much content, so many videos inside. So it's really hard to find, but that's really good. So congratulations for your own playlist. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, how you know, that's how you know you made it at Autodesk. You get your own playlist on the, on the YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you climb up the ladder yep. and yeah, we will see you, see you soon, uh, uh, soon, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not, man. I don't want that job. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think that's not, not an easy job. That's true, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I like doing this. I like doing electronics. I like talking with people. If I'm CEO, yeah. then I have to do all the business stuff. Yeah, that's true. And then you don't have time to, to do electronics anymore. That's true. <laughs> so, okay. So let me go yeah. ahead and go ahead, Richard. Do you see somebody? No, I'm just well, still waiting for, for some some input for, from you guys. Maybe there's anything you would like to ask. Do we have some preferences? Uh, so one question I will, uh, before you start, Jorge, is uh, one question from my side to, to the audience now is, um, are, are you experienced in electronics so, or did you do you already work with electronics? That's something I would like to know. Or are we talking to, yeah, people that are interested? I I see one, two, three, four, five people. Fritcher, I know, I know you. That's one of our colleagues here. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have you here. But if you if you would like to share this with me, okay. Mike says started brand new about a year ago. Nice. And cool. And uh, you already produced a handful of boards since hopping in. So that's cool to hear. So I hope all the boards worked. <laughs> uh, that's that's good. So, yeah. How was the experience? How was the onboarding? <laughs> Shocking, the shockingly, yes. Uh, that's got to be some electronics design humor there. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> no pun intended or pun intended, Mike. Shocking, yes. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> Excellent, man. Hey, you want to tell us a little bit about what you what you do, Mike? Since you since you jumped in. Yeah. Hey, can you hear me? Okay. We can hear you yeah. just fine. Cool. Um, yeah. So our company um, is called Hero H E A R O Technologies, and we've created a platform for remote support technology. Um, so think about care agency providers, um, staffing one-to-one, -one, uh, for care provider to individual receiving care in their home, big push in that industry to start going, um, you know, uh, doing as much as they can remotely monitoring, 
Um, and so a lot of our stuff is is largely software based, um, but we've got a, a big part of it is also hardware based with sensors, environmental sensors, motion, you know, door window stuff, bed sensors, this kind of stuff. And so we've been using Z-Wave um, devices for that for the past few years since we started. And we have felt the pain not only from, you know, supply chain issues to this, that, and everything in between, we've really wanted to start looking into creating our own uh, sensor devices. Um, and so started with something really simple, like a door window sensor. Um, and that's that's what I started with uh, using, um, um, goddamn uh, brain farting right now. Um, but there's Z-Wave, Zigbee out there. Um, and then we've transitioned to some different wireless technologies that, that we're messing around with. Um, and started getting quotes from companies for producing hardware and it was you know north of a million dollars like every time mm -hmm. and so um just kind of dove off the deep end uh for about a week straight F watched a lot of the video tutorials that uh, fusion has out there um mm -hmm. i used easy eda um for for the first stuff but uh, my business partner has licenses with Fusion 360. And so I've really been trying to get on, um, you know, this side of the equation and, and trying to use this platform. So sorry, that took so long just trying to get everything out. No, 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 that, that's good. And that's what we want to hear. We want to hear what you're, is there anything that, that you've run into that's been like a pain point, anything that's given you a lot of trouble? Maybe I can address it here. Yeah. Not necessarily. I mean, there's different quirks, you know, um, to, to learning it. And I feel like I've got over all that. One of the things that I'm curious about and was waiting for a good good chance to ask was um, if there's going to be Apple Silicon support coming because it is a uh, Fusion 360 is pretty, pretty slow on the on the M1 Max. And uh, I'm, I would love for that to be as fluid as it is, you know, on an Intel Mac or, you know, a PC. Right. So that's what I'm super curious about. Got it. So that is part, that is a goal for the organization. Um, supporting new hardware, as you can imagine, is, is a pretty big endeavor. Just because architecturally under the hood at, at the lowest level, everything is different. So the organization is working on that, um, but they, they haven't released a timeline on when that that native support will occur. Yeah. Um, Fusion, like many other big software projects, has a lot of dependencies, and any hiccups in those transitioning or supporting M1 software directly affects us. M1 hardware, sorry. Right. So we are investigating that, and it is being worked on. Um, but so far, they haven't given Richard and me a timeline of when that might happen. Yeah. But it yeah. but it, it is going to happen. That's that's a that is an eventuality. Um, in the meantime. You know, it works under Rosetta, so that's yep. that's kind of the, the the way the way they look at it. It's like we can take our time to make sure we get this right because it's we have something working. You know, right? Yep. You know, you can be oh, building I'm a to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like the saying goes, you know, if if you if you have a, a working bridge and you're going to build a new one, you keep using the working bridge until the new one's ready, and then you you break down the old one. So yeah, totally get of, it. That's kind of where we're at. Um, definitely quite, quite the, uh, quite the industry though. Medical has a lot of regulatory issues and a lot of, you know, a, a big part of the cost is just that it's getting all your certifications. And, right. So, Hey Mike, do, are you uh, running fusion on a M1 at the moment or? Uh, yeah, I am. I don't use it because it is, it's just. So like, if you've ever done it, you know that like, there's always this stutter. So like the moment like you try and like click and drag something around, there's just this momentary stutter when you're using other software, like it's totally fine. But when you're using something where you're dragging stuff around all the time and clicking, it's such a pain. So I'll, I'll either hop over to my, my Windows machine um, or, or I'll use different software, but it's, it's just too painful to use. Um, so I don't, I have it running, but I, I don't use it. Got okay. It. Okay. Yep. Got it. Are you, are you the only electronic uh, engineer or do you have other team members that can collaborate <laughs> yeah, with? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I've been the only one on our team handling that everyone, you know, as you can imagine, like we're a small company, first of all. So we've got, you know, as far as our dev team, it's, it's three others in addition to me. Um, and everyone kind of got super excited, you know, about this. And so we all kind of do it. I'm the only one really spearheading it. 
but we're kind of shifting modes into getting super serious about this now, whereas the past year's kind of just been like, can we figure this out? And we feel like we know enough about it now that we found a freelance uh, like contractor to work with. And so he is going to be the one, you know, like doing, you know, the next level of these that will actually start to beta test and put out into like a small round of circulation. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we, we've got someone else kind of doing the real stuff now. Got it. No, but it's, it's good because, you know, obviously if everybody's on the same hub, you can all check the work, you know, you all exactly. have access to it. You all have access to the libraries. So, so the collaboration side of it is a lot easier. You're not throwing emails over the wall, you know? Totally. And uh, my, uh, my uh, business partner um, has a background in, in manufacturing and had his licenses in, in Fusion 360 um, from more of like the, um, you know, enclosure designs and stuff like that. So he knows that world really well. And that was kind of the allure to us is, Oh, having it so in sync that we've got our electronic, you know, designs right in sync with the actual enclosure design and everything else. So. Yeah, definitely. And and that's that's one of the big things, you know, the big selling points for Fusion 360 is the fact that everything can kind of be in, in one place. Yep. You know, so, exactly. you know, whatever enclosure you have, you can check for interferences, you can check for fits things like that. And that's, this is the data set that I use for that series of videos. And I believe the third video goes into that part, being able to join into an enclosure. So, you know, if that's something you guys are going to be doing soon, I recommend checking that out before, before you get I started. think I'm probably, I'm looking at that, that, that combined file one down there and like, yeah. I'm pretty sure I've watched that exact series. <laughs> Excellent. Very cool. Thanks for sharing, Mike. Definitely. Yeah, Totally. Good. We, we want to, we always want to know what our customers are doing because sometimes, you know, we can't be aware of, of every industry and what the needs are. So if a customer is willing to share that with us, then that's something we can take into account, you know? Yep. Address yep. Specific. Happy to. Totally. Cool. Thanks, man. Right. Excellent. Okay. Anybody else want to share? We have Lynn. We have Ron. Free Joe, why, why are you hiding, man? <laughs> so, so everyone, want to introduce you to Free Joe, okay? Hi, Free Joe. Garcia. Ah, he's what? Ah, sorry, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> hey, hey, everyone. This is uh, Free Joe Francis. So, um, I'm working with Autodesk for the past uh, one and a half years, and before that, I was. Uh, working with a startup uh, which was uh, making a do tech uh, basically uh, i was a pcb designer there then i joined autodesk and i've been using eagle and fusion 360 for past five years most or more than that um, i'm not sure actually um so uh, you'll be like if you are if you have ever uh, raised a support ticket probably i'll be the one who handles that uh, yeah that's all about me Excellent. So yeah, so like Free just said, if you ever raise a support ticket, you've probably interacted with him. He's an excellent tech. And he, he's really, you know, beyond just working here, he really has a passion for it. So, you know, it's good to, to put a name, a face to the name. So if you've, like I said, like he said, you know, if you've opened any support tickets, you've seen him, you know, you've interacted with him. That's, the office is looking nice in Bangalore. Not many people working, uh, started working from office, but yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it, it looks like it, man. That's, it looks, looks cozy in there. Excellent. So we have Lynn, we have Ron. I think Lynn is connected by the phone, maybe. Uh, maybe. Okay. Okay, and Ron, if you guys want to, if anybody wants to open up or or share anything else feel free if not we'll go ahead and show a couple couple of interesting things i think go go ahead yes yes okay so let's go ahead and share some stuff so i want to highlight something really interesting because if you haven't seen the what's new video 
or if you haven't received, if you haven't read the What's New blog, you're not aware of this. But I'm going to go ahead and take advantage and do this now because I need to do it at some point. So, what better time than the present? So I'm going to go over here, go into the footprint. Okay. Now, if you saw the video, you're going to see that we have a new pad type, and it is a slotted pad. Okay, so finally, we have slotted pads. We can support them fully. Now, I don't have the data sheet of this component in front of me, but I'm going to just going to try to relatively kind of eyeball it. So I think this is, let's say, 100. Nope, still too small. Just 250. No, it's too big. Getting closer. Yeah, that's actually pretty good right there. Okay, I'll put this here for now. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check. Let me open up this panel. Okay, there we go. Position there. I'm gonna 100. Okay, so that's the width that I need to have on this slot. So go over here. And let's go ahead and change that. I'm gonna go ahead and just bring in another one. I would have that right. There we go. It's probably too big now. <laughs> so usually you would have a, a container sheet to look this up. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just winging it right here, just having a little fun. Yeah, sure, sure. But but yeah, it works. Uh, it's yeah, that's good enough. That's good yeah, enough. Just, that's true. There we go. I'll take it like that. Okay, cool. Then what I can do is now that we have that done, I'll put it into that way I have them ready. Okay, so we take this one, delete it, get the position of this one, 173. Can't wait till we have like the sketch tools in the library editor. I'd be happy to just have it in the library editor, honestly. <laughs> Even if we can't have it on the board. You know, especially if you're like used to fusion, you look at like ECADs, like mechanical CAD, and you're like, what's up with this? You know, and the reason is just that, you know, ECAD never you know the emphasis has never been on the mechanical portion you know so there's there's enough mechanical tools to get what you gotta need you know done but not enough to make it you know a really nice seamless experience like mechanical designers who have to do this day in and day out so eventually eventually again safe harbor statement the goal is to be able to be able to to have some of those tools in here where you can constrain, you can do dimensions, you can constrain, you can do relationships and not have to by paper copy these crazy numbers and do all that, you know? So let's go ahead and put this one here. There we go. I know they're overlapping. I know it's bad. Richard's going to yell at me, but. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right, cool. Now, the next thing I have to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this. Always write, always write a description. I know some users are like, why do you make me have to do this? And they just never want to deal with it. But having a paper trail is good. Um, you know, if something goes wrong, you can find out what was done at that time, who did it. You know, if you've ever used Git, there's actually a command called Git blame. <laughs> so you can figure out who to yell at for a certain change. You know, we don't have the, we don't have that infusion, but, you know, having the paper trail, make sure. So yeah. added slotted pads. Yeah, it's always important to, to be, um, yeah, to, to note and, and work precise and correctly and that helps a lot it, even if it makes more more work at the moment but later it will pay out to to be accurate there mm -hmm. yeah cool nice so it's changed right 
Yeah, now I just got to change the connections here. Yeah, true. Get the, get the pads removed. So... so you have to remove the connections here. That means you do a disconnect at this mm -hmm. place here and, and reconnect the others again. The new Correct. Pad. Yeah. Right, okay. So what I want to do is I want to... I'm actually going to leave it like this and then go and delete the, uh, the other ones. Oh, I see. That way I don't have the two overlapping weird pads, you know? So nope, I want to move it. I want to select. Yep. There we go. Well, not what I had intended to do, but I'm good with that. There we go. And now I can just delete them. Okay. Yep. These are just mechanical. They don't have any, any internal connection. So we'll go ahead and go back. And you'll notice that the library knows when something has changed, it goes, it highlights it in bold, and then it adds the asterisk. So now we go back here, I go connect, I do the same thing, and I just leave those there because they don't have any type of connection, they're just structural. There we go. So now we go ahead and save. Change pads. Signed. Okay, now it's saved. Oh, I just realized I left the milling contours in, so let me go ahead and take those off. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's true. So actually, until the the latest release, you had to use normal pads and and add a contour and in, in the milling layer so that you get the openings. And now it's yeah. much easier to do. Yep. You stopped sharing now. Yeah, I did for a second. Because okay. I thought I thought uh, it, I thought it had uh, something like had crashed, but no, it just jumped to my browser for some reason. I don't know why. Okay, so yeah, you had to do an, a kind of workaround for a long time, and that's something. Actually, I think in the very beginning when I started with with, with electronics design, the first one, one of the first questions for support was, "Do you support um, um, slotted pads?" Because I need them, of course, as you see here. A lot of connectors have these these. Uh, yeah pins for for yeah for mechanical stability and we had yeah a long time to wait for this feature and now finally we have it here you see the small how he's deleting everything in layer 46 uh, you you used the filters here to yep. to to select so i just explain on the right hand side on the bottom corner you see filtering options so here he selected the milling layer so everything it's just the milling layer that can be selected and now you can simply draw a group over the whole drawing for example and then everything in milling could be deleted all the other things remain unchanged and that's that's really nice to work with them yep that's something people often do not see there's a lot of benefit in in these tools here in the inspector and and the uh the content manager here, but then if you're in layout or in, in the schematic, the design manager, it's really great to work with it. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Perfect. So now I have the part updated with, to use the new slots. And now what I can do is I can go and open up the design and then update it to use it. Let me go ahead and give it a second. Saludos, Rodolfo. Hello, how are you? I see. I see someone came in. Yes, we have, yeah, new participant, right? Mm -hmm. Rodolfo. So we'll go over here. This is the file that links everything together. Right now, that's the only thing it's doing is linking the mm -hmm. the files. But eventually, the idea is that we can use it to have a many to many relationship. You know, have maybe have 10 sheets of a schematic and then break that out into individual boards for prototyping and things like that. But for now, it's just a one to one. That's true. At the moment, it's a little bit, it feels a little, a little bit too, yeah. It you feels like I mean? an extra step. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it's a preparation of the next step. So, yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. So we have to, to wait for more there. Okay. And this is a simple circuit. There's nothing crazy going on here. So go to library. 
We'll go to place or yeah, an update. I'm going to update it. Uh, are you? Is it in use right now? Should be. It's A to Z project. I think that's what I called it. Let me see. Yeah. So it should be there. If it's not, and if that happens to you, not that one. You go into the library manager. Right. And then you see if the library is there, you can have to sort by in use. Okay, it is A to Z. It is a little, yes. It is in use, so that's what we want. We want to make sure, if ever you don't see it or you expect to see it and it's not, then you can use these import functions here to forcibly put it into the database. So if ever it doesn't automatically put your library into use or you don't see it here, you can always search for it. Right. Okay. So it should be there. Let me see if I can use it in the place parts panel because maybe that's what's going on. If not, I'll just go in and, and replace it, but I'd rather not do that if I can avoid it. Let's see. All right. So I just did an update all libraries. It did it. Let's check the board. Here we go. You'll see that everything has the asterisk in it. And yeah. you can see that they have been changed, but now they're too close. So I need to put in a little bit of room, give them a little little separation. Yeah, that's the reason you yeah, you just didn't, you know, no, you, you didn't have the, the, the correct data. So it's a bit too big now. Yep. But of yeah, it's just showing. It's it's nice to have this uh, uh, these new slotted pads now. That's really cool. And the nice thing is, of course, they all work in all layers. It's not just in top and bottom as it would be with with the workaround we had before. So yeah, don't have to care. Take care on 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 inner layers. Now this is all all automatically done as it would be with yeah with all the other pads as well. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Now, I think they're a little bit off level. So what you can do is you can select them all. And you notice they have the, the different positions, the inspector here. And what you can do is one of the things that's really powerful about the inspector is, is that it's like the properties, but plus. So the properties dialog tells you the properties of everything that you select. With the inspector, you get common properties. So right now, if I want them all at the same height, I just put in that height and say enter, and they'll all even out. Make sure they're selected. And it should change. I don't know why it's not doing it. That's OK. I can fix it individually, worst case. There we go. OK. And then there is an align command, which allows us to have, have the three parts kind of space out a certain way. So you go to place, you can go to align, and you'll have these options. There you have to play around what's the correct one. <laughs> I know. I think it's this one. Let's see. Yeah, try. There, okay. That's the right one. <laughs> I wanted to evenly distribute the space between them. Yeah, so it, it, the middle one moved a little bit to the right, and then that's it. Um, actually, yeah, you, you could really easily arrange components so that they're evenly distributed. That's really nice to do, yeah. That's also cool. Excellent. Yeah. And then finally, I can push this to the 3D PCB. Yes, shows the 3D. So then we have some options. Do they, what about the options here? Um, okay. I deleted it. That's fine. I, okay. I just want to push the new one. Yes, here it is. There we go. Everything nice and properly spaced. Yeah. Looks and like we have the slots. Yeah. Now actually, the 3D models are a little bit different now, but OK. No, yeah, it fits. Yeah, it's OK. <laughs> OK, Excellent. cool. So um, why if you go back to the 2D PCB, please, just mm -hmm. touch, just, and if you click uh, the move to 3D again or, or push to 3D again, mm -hmm. there we get a dialogue. And there we have some, some options. Um, 
what's yeah so we have the 3d pcb with canvases um, and we have the stop layer geometry this means if you would activate this one you would see the uh, the stop layer in 3d uh, it takes longer to to be pushed then um, the 3d pcb with canvases if i'm right this is something it's um the, the traces are just displayed as lines is this correct or what, what's it yeah it's just it's just a picture this yes. is the right yeah yeah this is the fastest one if you do 3d pcb with canvases that's the fastest one yeah. but you don't have any any geometry for the actual copper so mm. it's not suitable for like thermal simulation and stuff like that but if you just are like doing some quick test fits that's perfect um same thing with the stop layer geometry most of the time it doesn't you know, make much of a of an issue. Mm. Um, but if you're going to do some sophisticated simulations, you may want to have it included as well because it is a material. It has dielectric properties. It has thermal conductivity properties. So, you know, in in for the sake of speed, you can disable some of these. That mm. way, it's a faster it's a faster 3D model. Uh, you mm. know, generation process. Yeah. Um, and then here it gives you a list of everything that has a model. And everything that's missing and if you look i'm missing for for the diode so i don't have a model for that one but i'm okay with that because all the other ones that are more important have a model so i usually roll with it mm, okay nice so i want to mention something else because i'm looking at the watch we have 43 minutes okay we started late but okay um, what i would like to mention is um and before i forget it um we have the Fusion Insider program. And that's something I really want to mention because um, and this is, a um, if you Google your for, for Fusion 360 Insider, uh, you, you, you will find it. And um, the Insider program is for, for guys like you. If you're interested in getting early access or earlier access to, to releases, um, or if you would like to connect to the deaf guys or have a closer connection to them. And if you would like to at least a little bit influence the, the direction where we are going with, with Fusion in uh, development wise, then feel free to join, especially if we're searching for electronics users because that's, that's pretty new. We have, we have tons of mechanical users, of course, um, but electronics is pretty new, and I would be happy to find any one of you there <laughs> if you if you would like to join. Um, actually, we will have safe harbor statement. We will have a new release tomorrow in the Insider program because we are heading for a new release in in July. And if you're interested in, feel free to join. It's it's for free. You have just to register and. Uh, well, you get access, you can download the, the newest version and yeah, use it, play around, um, report back, get information what's going on, seeing what will be in the new release. And as I said, you could also even influence a little bit uh, the direction where we're going to. Um, I placed I the uh, URL in the chat, but I also put it on the event page along with George's uh, um link to his playlist and all that so i'm throwing everything in there okay. nice thank you sean so, yeah cool i see okay so it's really interesting so every electronics users of course if you're using a fusion for mechanics no worries <laughs> that's also heavily welcome uh, i i really would like to see more spread the word please if you have colleagues and yeah tell them about fusion insider that's really a nice program and yeah. that's what I wanted to, and I just see, I just brought up the web page. Oh, we have a new logo in the beginning. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So yes, um, feel free to join. Yeah. So to, to add to Richard's comment, the big benefit is that you get the next release of Fusion two to three weeks before it comes out. Mm. So you can play with the latest features. And if you see something that's wrong, you can report it as well. Yes. Um, so basically you're getting a, a preview two to three weeks out of what's coming. So you can start playing with it, start learning how it works, and even start leveraging it 
in, in your current work because it uses production data. So it's not like on a separate staging environment. The pre-prod data is on a, is, is the same as, as normal production data. So it's, it's very convenient. You're not put into any type of uncomfortable uh, file situation where you have to upload projects to like a different environment. It uses normal data, the, the projects you already have. So it's it's very comfortable to work with. And usually as soon as as soon as it's available, I tend to switch over to it once the next one is up. That way I can I can demo and, and show new stuff that's coming down the pike. So really helpful. The more electronics users we have in it, the more feedback we can gather and the, the more things we can improve. So you're all welcome using the link that Sean put in there, as well as on the main the main community conversations page for this series. Yep. Yes. Okay. Any okay. comments? Anything you guys would like to see in future conversations? Because that would be that would be good feedback for us. Is there anything you would want to see? Anything that you'd be interested in talking about? Make it in the chat if anybody wants to post it there. If you want to open up your mic and just say it, that works too. Yeah, feel free to join the conversation. Or if you if you want everybody's in shy or in awe of uh, the expansive uh, knowledge here. No, or if there's, there's so, if there's something you don't like, feel free to tell us also. That works too. You know, no such thing as as bad feedback. It's all a matter of how you take it. And there is no there is no. Uh, no dumb question at all. Any questions? Any question is is welcome, and it don't 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 be shy and ask what yeah, you want yeah. to. <laughs> okay, I said the remote. Okay. Okay. Cool. No worries, Mike. It's all good. It was um, good to have you here. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I, see us next time. Yeah. Uh, we we do these every month, so feel free to join the next one. Um, if there's any tutorial subject, I'm always down for, for tutorial ideas. So if there's something you guys see that hasn't been done or you would like to, to find out more about it, let me know because I'm always game to, to make a video. Yeah, true. And just a note on the series. So all community conversations take a break uh, for summer in July and then they'll be back in uh, August and uh, so all that calendar will be built out and live today and everybody can subscribe. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, if there's nothing else, I think Sean, we can end it here or? I could. Now we got some, Lynn says she'll have some questions for the next session and Lynn, that would be August, um, unless you have it now. Um, Mixing analog and digital sides of a PCB to a microcontroller. Ooh, that's a good one. If yeah, oh, you're having on. trouble unmuting. Oh, well, let's let's see if you could, well. Is she? Look, you have audio on it, or is it on the phone? She might be on the phone. Can you unmute the phone? Do you yeah, have I could. I don't know if that's. I don't know if that's them. <laughs> I don't want to unmute somebody that is not that person. So let, let let's see if Lynn, if you can on the on the chat. Okay, yeah. you are on the phone. All right, I will try it. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's her. Yeah. That's yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, it may just be a, a phone thing. I've, I've asked to unmute. I can't force unmute. Un, unmute. Right. So. Okay. Hmm. That's a good topic, though. If, if you want to hear a little bit about it now in the few minutes we have left, I can talk a little bit to that. Like if you're in the middle of something and you have a specific question, I'm happy to, to help with it. Okay, she's going to type. Cool. Cool. <laughs> that and, works. And, it, and it could be that your star six mute doesn't work when Zoom, if you're in the Zoom. So you may have to use the Zoom unmute. I don't know, Zoom. For all the money they've made, they sure haven't made many uh, headways into usability. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. 
it's actually a big contention. It's the whole analog and digital ground thing. It all depends on who you ask. Um, generally, the continuous ground. Okay, PSOC. Oh, nice. Those are good chips. Very, very unique in our industry. They're basically digital chips that have analog hardware built into them. And you can basically use them as like functional blocks and you can enable and disable whichever ones you need for your application. Sensor power supply. Okay. So just a couple of quick tips with, with that. Um, so, yep. 21 bit Sigma Delta ADC and some, oh, snap. Mm -hmm. That's, that's going to be a, that's definitely a good candidate for having the split for sure. So, so let's talk about this a little bit. Let me see if I can, we got three minutes, five minutes, no, or three minutes. What do we got, Sean? You got what you need, as long as we don't go too crazy on time, but yeah. Okay. The, the door doesn't shut. I don't think. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. So, so definitely, you know, to start off, stepper motors are extremely noisy. And on the same board, you have a 21-bit a Sigma Delta. If, if you don't handle the noise situation, you are not going to get 21 bits out of that converter. The noise is going to be so much that you'll be lucky if you get, you know, 15, you know, 14 bits out of it, if you're lucky. So what's typically recommended to do is if, if space permits, ideally you would want to have just a solid plane, just one big plane but you would lay out the board in such a way as to keep those areas separate. You wouldn't have digital circuitry on the analog side and you wouldn't have analog circuitry on the digital side. That's not always possible, okay? And if that's your case, because the design is dense, then you go into split planes, okay? The idea behind split planes is that you make sure that the return ground currents don't interact with each other. Because if they do, then you'll get the noise coupling to the, to the digital side. Okay, because I mean, depending on how you want to interpret it, it's probably better to think high noise and low noise versus analog and digital. Because even though stepper motors are technically analog, um, the way they're driven creates a lot of digital waveforms that are noisy. So I like to, th I would think in this application more in terms of high noise versus low noise. You know, circuitry that's going to generate a lot of, of noise and then circuitry that I need to protect from that noise. So in this case, you know, the, the, the ADC is something you want to protect. Any sensor inputs, you want to keep all of that away from the stepper drivers. So what you'll do is you have two separate planes, okay? But they're going to meet at one point. You have to make sure they meet at a single point. If they don't meet, the board will not work, okay? Because all grounds eventually have to connect. So what you end up doing and the recommended workflow for this is to have them meet back at the main power supply. So you have your two planes and you have them overlap at the power supply. If you do that and you're careful with your layout, you should be pretty good to go. I think I think we I think I have a document on this. Give me one second. I'm still good. I can still make it. I can make it. Just go on again. Just one second. Okay, here we go. Yeah, and if you overlap the, the, the planes, so the, the design will check will complain because there's an overlap, but that's an, an error you have to accept, of course. So, but that, that's the way you have one, one connection point between these two voltages. Okay, let me see if this one covers it. Because this is more on like power supply design, this, this reference I had. Maybe maybe we could move this conversation if, if it's okay for Lynn uh, uh, to, to our next session and really dive a little bit into this. I think that would make sense. I think so too. Okay. So, but uh, as Sean said, it, it will be August the 20th. I'm, 
I'm mm -hmm. looking it up right now. Um, yeah. Electronics design. Uh, it's, it's September twenty eighth is one, and then there's one in August as well. 20, yeah, yep, there is. There is um, August twenty fourth. Okay, August twenty cool. fourth. Yeah, right. Frigio, thank you. Oh, Frigio, <laughs> yeah, Frigio. Yeah. Thanks, Frigio. Sean, <laughs> Sean, could you uh, could you put a link to the forums? Absolutely. To the Fusion three hundred and sixty forums. Yep. Let me uh, let me do that. Helen, I'm also based in Germany, <laughs> so you're not too far from me, I guess. I'll give you a link to this, and uh, you guys will prepare for the August one, and we can wrap this up. I will give the closing yes. words. You don't need to bring up the slides, Richard. I'll just I'll just talk to I, them. I have, it, I have it here, Sean. I have it here. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You, do you see it? I do. I do. Okay. Uh, don't don't leave us just yet. I'm going to give you some resources here. Um, I just gave you the other link to the uh, um, these this event, and that's where the recording will be, and that's where I put some of the other links. And I will be giving you a whole bunch of helpful links to the community. We have community blogs. If we have anybody that's in, you know, really competent in Fusion 360 electronics and is a customer and would like to be a blogger in the Voices blog, we welcome that. We have the forums. We have we have all different kinds of things. The community conversations. We hope to see you on on August 20, 24th. And uh, thank you, thank you for putting. We had a little bit of a rough start. Uh, just you know, uh, emergencies happen, and the host uh, wasn't able to attend. So um, I want to thank everybody, Lynn, uh, Mike. Uh, hey, Mike, that that was that was fascinating what you're doing. So. Uh, Way to jump in there and try and save a million dollars and, and uh, bootstrap and build it. So awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will let you go. Thank you, as always. Uh, everybody, enjoy the July off. Just that reminder. George, Richard, Frijo, thank you. Thank you all. Thank Bye you, everyone. Take care, everybody. See ya.